In this video lecture, I will explain a C program to compute average marks of any student uh, that contains name, roll number and test marks and search a particular record based on roll number. So, if I have to store a uh, student detail, uh, name, suppose I say name, roll number and test marks for one student. So, what I will be doing? I will be declaring three different variables. One for name that will be a character array. Okay. And then, uh, then for roll number, I will be declaring a variable roll number that will be of int type. And then for test marks, I will be taking float and it will be array. Why it will be array? Because for one student, if I say for student 1, I have three subject marks. So, subject 1, subject 2 and subject 3. So, for one student, there are three subjects. So, that's why we have to take array. So, if I have to maintain, uh, store one student detail. So, I will be declaring three variables. But if I have to uh, store 60 and student, suppose n is equal to 60, if I have to store 60 student details, so what I have to do, I need to take 60 different variables for name to store the student name, 60 different variable, uh, 60 different int variable roll num for ro storing the roll number and same way for marks also. So it becomes very difficult to maintain these many variables in our program. So, what is the other alternative? I will be declaring one structure. So, what is structure? It's a collection of different data item. So, these fields I will be uh, writing inside the structure definition. So, this these field name, roll number and test marks of the student will become the members of the structure. Okay. And uh, uh, how we declare the structure? We write the struct keyword and the name of the stu uh, structure is student and these three are the member. Name is uh, definitely, st student name is a string. So, we need to take a character array, roll number, integer type and marks are, uh, have explained because for one student, if I assume there are three subjects, so then I have to take an array and this three means this uh, marks is an array that can store three uh, subject marks. Okay. And then this is the variable, the structure variable. So again, if I say I just declare st, this is the structure variable. Okay. So what will happen if I write st dot name? I can access student name. St dot roll number. I can access student uh, roll number. Okay. But what will happen again? To access sixty student details, I need to declare sixty variables like st one, st two, up to st sixty. So again the program becomes lengthy if I have 60 different structure variable. So instead of writing 60 different structure variable, so what, because if I say first st1.name means first student name, st2.name, second student name, st3.name, third student name. So instead of writing these many variables, I'll be taking one array. Okay, so this variable will be of array type. So what will happen if I say sti.name and when i is equal to 0, that means the name of the first student, i becomes one name of the second student. So, I will be writing one for loop and inside this for loop, I will be accessing the name, uh, roll number and marks using array. So, here this variable is of array type. So, this is the example of array of structure and here the members are of array type. So, array within structure. Okay, and then after uh, structure definition, what we'll be doing? We'll be writing the main function, and then here we have taken three different variables i, n, and roll number. This i because we'll be writing the loop, so we have taken this i as a loop variable. N is for the number of student because we need to store n student uh, roll number name and marks. So n is the number of student, and this roll number, this variable we have taken because we need to search the second part of the program. We need to search the particular uh, record uh, by roll number. For example, if user enter roll number 1, so that uh, that student detail should be displayed. Okay, and then sum and average because we have to compute the average marks. So, we need to take a variable average and sum that will be of float type. Okay, and then we'll be asking user only to input the number of student. So, one print of message is given here that will uh, be printed as it is, enter the number of student and then scan of function, this m percent n. So, here if user enters suppose n is equal to 60, so that means 60 student name, 
60 student name name roll number and marks should be inputted okay so then we know that we cannot access the members of the structure directly whenever i want to access the member i need to write structure variable dot member and structure variable we have seen it was it was st uh, 60 right so this was the structure this was the structure variable so whenever i want to access the member so i want to input suppose name okay so i'll be writing sti dot name so when i is equal to 0 this will be st0 dot name this value will be taken from the user and since it's a string so uh, we need not write m percent here and the format specifier will be percentile s okay so this st0 dot name is first student name okay when i becomes 1 so then st1 dot name this will be second student detail like this same way for roll number if it is st i is equal to 0 st0 dot roll number is first student first student roll number when i becomes 1 it will be st1 dot roll number that is second student roll number so it, taking name and roll number uh, from the user it is easy but here uh, we have to input the marks of each student and what we have assumed here for each student there are three subjects so uh, for student one okay for student one there will be marks zero marks one and marks two so marks zero means first marks for subject marks marks one means second subject marks marks two means third subject marks so since there are only three subjects so what we can do when i is equal to zero sti dot marks zero so sti dot marks zero will give you first student first student first marks then st0 dot marks one will give you first student second marks and then st0 dot marks two will give you so, uh, first student third mark same way when i becomes one it will be st1 dot mark zero means second student first marks st1 dot marks one second student second marks st1 dot marks two second student third marks okay so one way of doing this is directly we are giving uh, here in the scan of or another way what we can do we can write one for loop for marks that will be j is equal to 0 to j less than 3 because there are 3 student and j plus plus and then uh, before this scan of okay before this scan of this for loop we need to write here and then in scan of function what we'll write we'll write percentile f because marks format specifier uh, uh, it is a float type so format specifier percentile f will be used and m percent sti dot marks j okay and this for loop is inside this outer for loop i so when i is equal to 0 when i is equal to 0 j 0 j 1 and j 2 because it is less than 3 so i is equal to 0 j is equal to 0 means first student first marks i is equal to 0 j is equal to 1 means first student second marks i is equal to 0 j is equal to 2 means first student third marks. so this is first marks this is second marks and this is third subject mark of first student when i becomes when i becomes when i becomes one then this is second student first marks second student second mark second student third subject marks so instead of writing uh, sti dot mark zero marks one marks two we can write one for loop before the scan of this for loop and then uh, scan of we can give uh, we can write like this sti dot marks j okay so both the ways we can do so this for loop is basically just taking the input from the user so this student name uh, roll number and marks will be taken from the user okay and in if user has given 60 uh, for n that means 60 student details will be taken okay and then now we need to uh, find the average mark so again we need to write one for loop for that and then inside the for loop we are calculating the sum first so sum when i is equal to i is equal to 0 so it will be st0 dot marks 0 st0 dot marks 1 st0 dot marks 2 means first student this will be st0 dot marks 0 means first student first marks 
first student second marks first student third marks and then again will come here and sum we have initialized as zero initially it will be zero and then first student whatever data we have inputted that will be that marks will be taken and then i value will be incremented when i becomes one it will be st1 dot marks zero st1 dot marks one st1 dot marks two means second student uh, marks like that the uh, when i becomes two the third student first subject marks second subject marks third subject marks will be added and when this condition becomes false will come out of the for loop and the final sum value calculated sum value means average the marks of all the student of all the subjects will be added here and then it will be divided by the total number of student that is n and that average marks will be calculated and that we are going to print here so the first part of the program is done and then the second part we need to search the particular record based on the roll number so user will be this roll number is a variable which we have declared inside the main function and then user it, uh, we will be asking the user to input the roll number of a student uh, for which uh, he i mean that student uh, roll number if he is entering that student uh, roll number that uh, uh, record of that particular student will be uh, displayed okay so for example if user enter 1 so the stu uh, student whose roll number is 1 his record his details means his name roll number and marks will be displayed so again we need to hear what we have to do we have to uh, apply the concept of linear search so we will be writing one for loop and here we are checking the condition see when we say sti i is equal to 0 so this will be st0 dot roll is equal to is equal to roll number so this role is the member of the structure means st0 dot roll means first student roll number if it matches with the roll number which user is searching then what it will do it will display the detail means his marks and uh, name will be displayed and break suppose the roll number which user want to search if it matches with the first student roll number we need to break why we need to go for the next student details right so we have to break means we need to come out of the while loop sorry for loop so when the break is encountered uh, we will come out of the for loop so the next iteration will not be executed if this is not correct so for, for example if i is equal to 0 definitely if i say in uh, user has in given roll number 2 so it does not matches with the roll number second student uh, first student roll number then what we have to do we will to come to else part and continue means that means we will go to the next iteration of the loop that means i is equal to 1 and like this we will be searching from uh, we will be searching from the beginning first st0 means first student roll number will be compared with the roll number user has entered and then i becomes one means second student roll number will be compared with the roll number which user want to search and then third student roll number four like that if we search through the entire list means from zero to n if we search zero to less than n if we search and suppose that roll number is not present in the list for example if i say there are 60 students okay and i am i want to search suppose roll number 62 okay and the roll number is from 1 to 60 so definitely the 62 will not be present so once we come out of the for loop this condition will be checked if i is equal to n i is equal to n means that entire list from 1 to 60 that roll number is not present then we need to print the message roll number not found okay and end of the program so hope you have understood the concept of this program thanks for watching